So in this video we're going to discuss all about transformers and give a basic insight into how a transformer operates. So in this video we're just going over the basics of how a transformer works, also how it can be wired and also configured depending on the individual transformer. If you're familiar with transformers and have a good understanding of how they operate, uh, this is going to put you to sleep. So use this video as a bedtime story rather than an informational video. But other than that, let's get stuck into the video. So here I have a few transformers lying around my workshop at the moment. And as you can see, they all look a little bit different, but transformers all do the basic same job. We feed power in through one set of wires, we get power out from a different set of wires. And what determines the input and output voltage and how we connect a transformer is what we're going to discuss today. And if we look at a transformer, something like this toroidal transformer I've got here with six wires coming out, if you don't understand how a transformer works, this can be quite confusing to look at. So we're going to break the transformer down into its basic components. If we have a look at this little transformer, this is a very typical garden variety transformer. We've got four wires which are connected to two windings. These are called a primary and a secondary winding. And we also have an iron core uh, surrounding the windings. So to represent those three components, I've got a secondary, a primary winding, and an iron core. Now, these are very crude mock-ups of the components in a transformer just to purely demonstrate how everything is wired and how everything works fundamentally. So let's discuss in further detail what a primary and secondary winding does. Now a primary winding in a transformer is the winding of wire we feed power into from our wall outlet and a secondary winding is the winding we connect our load to. So in a transformer you would typically see its primary have a few hundred turns of wire. However, uh, each transformer is individually tailored to meet that of the voltage in your country as well as the load uh, on the transformer, how much power it's going to put out, etc. So it does vary a lot. But um, essentially we're just talking about the very basic fundamentals today of how a transformer works. And as mentioned, this red wire and plug is going to represent my primary winding. Now, you have to forgive the fact that my primary winding here doesn't have a few hundred turns of wire in it, but nevertheless, this is how a primary winding is wired in a transformer. We have live and neutral wires from our wall outlet. These connect to either side of the winding, or either end of the winding. And you might be forgiven for thinking, well, it doesn't matter how many turns of wire I've got over here, isn't this a dead short between live and neutral? And if we're talking about um, DC power, yes, this would be a dead short if we powered it up with uh, direct current. However, because naturally a transformer runs from alternating current, or AC power, this does not act as a dead short when it's powered up. Because what happens when the power comes in from our wallet and it goes around and around our uh, primary winding, which is surrounded by an iron core, this creates an alternating magnetic field and it does not dead short live and neutral together. So now if you imagine we've got power coming in, it's going around our primary creating a magnetic field. We can then, if we look at our mock up secondary, we can place the secondary within this magnetic field and this induces power into the secondary. So now we have uh, voltage and power between these two contact points here and our transformer is outputting power as it's supposed to. So we've covered the basics of how a primary and secondary is wired and if you look at our basic transformer here you can see it's got four wires and you'd come to expect that on a transformer you would always have an even number of wires because there's only two ends to one wire, correct? Well not the case because some transformers can have taps put in somewhere along the windings. So on this transformer, we've got three wires on this side and two wires on this side. So how does that work? 
Well, one of the windings, and this can be either the primary or secondary, can have a tap put in somewhere along the winding. So this is, a tap is where the manufacturer at some point in the winding came along and electrically connected a wire. So now between this point and either of these points I'm going to get a different voltage when compared to um, these two points on the secondary winding. Now why is this advantageous? Well you could have a tapped primary winding that can be used internationally so across the world as we know there is all sorts of voltage uh, different voltages for wall outlets this can range from 100 volts AC to 240 volts AC typically so you might want a transformer that can run anywhere in the world you're going to have a primary winding that can uh, run off different voltages so it's going to have multiple hookup wires for the primary similarly you can have a transformer that has a multi-tapped secondary so that you have different voltages different voltage outputs from the one transformer you can also have a transformer that has multiple secondaries so in this transformer we have four individual secondary windings um, and we still only have the one primary on this side so this is handy because now instead of having four individual transformers each putting out one voltage this one transformer can put out four different voltages on four different secondaries so what deciding factor determines the output voltage of the secondary well this has to do with the relationship between the primary and secondary and the amount of turns they have on each winding so let's make up a hypothetical scenario let's say we have 220 volts coming into our primary winding here and our hypothetical primary winding has 100 turns of wire on it and let's say our secondary also has 100 turns of wire on it because we have a one to one ratio between our primary and secondary our output voltage is going to be exactly the same 220 volts but let's say we want to lower the voltage let's say we want to halve it so we've got 220 volts coming in we still have 100 turns of wire on our primary but our secondary now only has 50. That means our input voltage is halved because we have half the amount of turns compared to the primary and now we have 110 volts across our secondary. What if we want to increase it? Well similarly we can just increase the number of turns on the secondary. So let's say we increase the turns to 200 so now it's double that of the primary. That also means it's going to double the voltage so now we're going to get 440 volts output from our secondary winding. So let's have a look at this toroidal transformer I purchased uh, for an up and coming project. So over here we have brown and blue wires, uh, this represents live and neutral, this is our primary winding. And then we have four wires over here. Now this transformer has two secondary windings. Now if we have a look at the manufacturer's label here, we can see that each secondary over here is rated for 25 volts and outputs 10 amps of current each. So there is a couple of ways we can configure this transformer to either increase the voltage or the current. So I'm sure you are all familiar with what this is. This is a humble AA battery. And if I measure the voltage, if you have a look at the multimeter readout, we can see that this battery puts out just over one and a half volts. And I'm sure a lot of you are aware of what happens when you put batteries in series. If we connect positive to negative on the batteries and measure across both batteries now, the voltage is now 3.1. Now similarly, with a transformer with multiple secondaries, we can do the same. We can wire both secondaries in series. So let's pretend I electrically connect uh, yellow and black together. Now between orange and red I'm going to get the voltage of both secondaries combined. So now I'm going to get 50 volts between these two wires. It's worth mentioning however that the, vol uh, the current sorry, still remains the same. So each uh, secondary was rated at 10 amps of current. We are still limited by that. We're still 10 amps of current but we're now at 50 volts. There is another way we could configure the secondaries though. 
we could put them in parallel. So parallel, rather than connecting, uh, if we go back to our batteries, positive to negative, we're going to connect both positives together and both negatives together. So this will not increase the voltage, but it will increase the current. And you'd wire it something like this. So we've got brown, uh, so we've got orange and black, and yellow and red. And this would now be in a parallel configuration where we get 25 volts, but we now get it at 20 amps of current. So let's talk about how to identify primary and secondary windings. Now in an ideal world such as can be found on my transformer here, the manufacturer has clearly labelled the colour codes for what each wire does. But sometimes we don't live in an ideal world and you end up getting a transformer out of a skip like I did, which has six wires that are all colour coded white. Great. Now, we can't just use a multimeter alone to work out what the primary and secondary is. If, for example, I'll demonstrate, I'll get out my multimeter and I'm going to set it to ohms. And we're going to measure the resistance of the primary winding. So this transformer has only one ohm of resistance on its primary winding. And if we connect up our multimeter to the primary winding on this little transformer, there we go, we can see it's got a resistance of 231 ohms. So both of these transformers are designed to run off 220 volts or thereabouts and both have vastly different resistances on their primaries. So we can't use a multimeter alone to work out what a primary and secondary is. So to correctly identify a primary and secondary winding on a transformer if they aren't clearly labeled, obviously takes a bit more than your garden variety multimeter can offer. And I'm not going to go into detail of how this is done and what equipment is needed unless you guys want to see that in a future video. However, if you are salvaging a transformer from an appliance, such as this microwave oven transformer, the easiest thing to do is to simply trace the power cord all the way to the transformer. The wires from the power cord, they, these might pass typically through a fuse or a switch, uh, but will eventually lead to uh, the transformer found in the appliance, and this will typically be your primary winding. So that's the easiest way to identify primary winding on a salvage transformer. So as I mentioned earlier, I purchased this transformer for an up and coming project. However, the AC output uh, from the transformer is no good to me. I can't use it. It needs to be rectified to DC power. And to do that, it only takes a couple simple components. A capacitor and a full bridge rectifier. And this is what I'm going to discuss in my next video. I'm going to discuss how to choose the correct capacitor and also the correct full bridge rectifier. And if you want to see that, click the link up in the video's corner here. So hopefully you found this video informative and it gives you a little bit more info on how a transformer works and also how you can use it in any projects that you may need. So if you found this video useful, please give it a like. It'll be much appreciated. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.